Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to make a Deep Sky Stacker tutorial video showing you guys how to stack files in Deep Sky Stacker and produce an image with calibration frames. Okay, so let's jump right in here. So you can see a single frame right here and it's dark and that's perfectly normal. Um, but what you can do is go to this slider in the top right corner and you can bring the mid-tones forward and you can really see what you've captured. You can see the crescent nebula and Cygnus. And if you stretch the image a little bit, you'll start to see the issues your image has. You can see that there's brighter patches, darker patches, there's lots of noise and stacking the files together um, will reduce the noise, but adding calibration frames will help get rid of a lot of the issues that are within a single frame. And this image here is a 4 minute exposure at f6.3 at 787 millimeters with my um, 5 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. So what we're going to do now is open up my calibration frame library that I have. So you can see I have a library of different lengths of dark frames and this is what I'm going to use as my calibration frames to fix the image. So I can just close that. So what you can go up to the top left corner and you can click dark files and what you can do is go to your calibration library and in this case, I need to use my four minute darks. And I just select all of the dark frames and press open. And it opens up all the dark frames. And then same, you'd want to do that for your flat frames. Go to your flats. Select all of them and open. And for the my camera, what I'm using, I wouldn't necessarily use bias frames, but what I'm going to use instead are dark flat frames. So once again, select all dark flats. So now I have all the frames here and the image, and now we can move on to the next step and the image is ready to stack. So what you want to go is to register checked pictures and I've gone through all my images and got rid of the bad ones. So I'm going to keep it at selecting 100% of the photos because I've gone through them and thoroughly checked and got rid of all the bad frames. So you want to go to advanced and you see this, the star detection threshold. So this is what the software uses to align your images to, de to detect stars, but you don't want to detect too many stars because what can happen is the stacker stacking software can detect noise and it will not stack your images property. The details will be smeared. So, Compute detect number of detected stars. So you can see 34 stars, that's not enough to stack. So we want to bring the percentage down to let's say 16%. And you can see now it's selected 59 stars. Bring it down just a little bit. Okay, 128 stars, that's a good number. You don't want your number to be too high because that runs the risk of detecting noise. So, but with the amount of stars in the field, we could probably bring that number ahead just a bit more, maybe to 5%. Let's see how that looks. 190 stars. Yeah, that'll be okay. Let's try that. And then recommended settings. You can, I use um, auto adapted weight of average. Uh, that's what I find works best for me. But it, I think you might, like I just leave everything the way it is and it works just fine. And you wanna go to stacking parameters, same thing. Like 
um, an auto adapted way to have average. I have five iterations, but everything else here, like I have it at median, but you can, like you can keep it at whatever the default is, and it works just fine. Okay, so now we're at the final stage, and I have two times drizzle, which would re increase the resolution of the picture. And it's a super cool feature. It, it makes your stars look less blocky and make them look round. And the Hubble Space Telescope uses the same method when taking pictures and processing them. And that was where the method originated from. So I have seven hours of data and everything here should be okay to use and um, don't bother with that. Everything's fine here. So we're just going to press OK and it'll start registering the pictures. It'll apply the calibration frames and it will do its thing and you'll come out with a final result in the end. So. I'll just wait and see until that is done and I'll check back in. So here I am back a day later, literally, because I was busy and couldn't finish recording. So here I am the next day. This is what Deep Sky Stacker produced. So you can, there isn't much in the image, but that's perfectly fine. You, what you can do is stretch the image with the sliders here and you can and you'll start to see what you've really captured so the image is stretched and you can see how much better the image is compared to a single frame there are a few issues which can either be cropped out or fixed in post processing but the overall image is a lot better the signal to noise ratio has improved greatly and a lot of the structures of the Crescent Nebula really show up well. You can see here that a lot of the noise in the image has disappeared and it's a lot cleaner and there's a lot more fine detail visible within the Crescent Nebula. I think overall stacking makes their image 100 times better and there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. And the same idea goes for stacking raw files from a DSLR camera. Um, the amount of calibration frames, if you use them or not, can vary between the cameras that you're using. But overall, I recommend using calibration frames. It improves the image quality in the end a lot more. And it's just a no-brainer. They should be used unless your camera doesn't exactly need them. But with DSLRs, yes, it's the same idea with stacking. But in this example, I was using FITS files from my cooled monochrome CMOS camera. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. And to give some more knowledge about stacking files in Deep Sky Stacker. I hope to make some more tutorials in the future with other topics and software, but for now, this is what I got. Um, keep looking up and clear skies. Mm -hmm.